Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature, and it's Friday, which means we bring to you the first of our summer vacation Obscurities in Literature. So this book in front of me, Dragon Arrow from Dark Horse Comics, uh, got this a couple years ago, and with my family off on the plane, hopped off to Japan, I figure, you know what, this book... I don't know how many times I, I actually thought I left it in Japan because I've read it so many times over there. And turns out I did actually finally bring it back to the States, uh, which is a good thing. So I can actually do this video. Uh, I don't know how I discovered this book. I really, truly don't. I don't remember ordering it on Amazon and I don't really remember reading reviews of it. This is like one of those things I think one of the online shops was having like a big grab bag sale or something. That may have been how I got it. I don't know anymore. Uh, that's one of those things just lost to history. But looking at the names, you'll notice those are quite the Italian names. So there was a period about 2008, 2009, somewhere around there, where Dark Horse was busy bringing over a lot of Italian comic books. Uh, I know like Dylan Dog, uh, there was a sci-fi one, Nate or Nathan something, I don't remember. Maybe that's my imagination, but I know Dylan Dog was. Uh, and I think this book came out around that same era. And while the other books were in their kind of really thin, kind of prestige format style. So yeah, let me mention, this book is not like regular size comic book. So it's a little bit smaller, um, a little bit thicker than the typical manga book. It's an odd size, which you know I guess made it stand out even more to me. But... What I really liked about this was, you can tell right from the cover, it's going to be a very fantasy uh, style story. And I dug the fact that it is a nice, complete story. While there are little teasers of things that could exist uh, for possible sequels, as far as I know, there never was one. But it's a very straightforward fantasy tale. You've got, you know, the impending doom coming to ruin civilization that the wise old wizard sees and enlists the help of an elite band of warriors basically to go and take care of everything. What I really liked was the fact, the more I look at this, there was a very, I don't know, Final Fantasy-esque high technology existing in a very, you know, typical medieval world. I really like that vibe and I remember playing through the Ark the Lad games around the same time that I picked this up. Which I thought just kind of added to the fun ambiance. But the art style I really like. Some of the earlier sections of the story just really nicely, densely packed details. And it's nice to see an artist Striking out on their own, doing their own take on fantasy. Obviously, it is very Dungeons & Dragons-like at times. But I think with the addition of the tech aspect of it, I mean, everybody's flying around like on airships. Again, that Final Fantasy, Ark the Lad vibe. Ark the Lad is just something that people don't talk about. And I only remembered it because I, I stumbled across... Some kind of promo materials I had laying around for it. Not that I even have the games anymore. I remember I had like a big, thick, hardback instruction manual. You've got your usual elves that don't want to help. Your heroic warrior. Interesting bug people. Racial relations with the ogres. Fun stuff. And like I said, it's a nice, complete story. I'm assuming these were serialized. I mean, the way the maps are laid out within the structure of the story makes me kind of feel that way. And based on the fact that I've got a few other books like Gunland and Dylan Dog, kind of the same thing. Lots of short stories, uh, you know, building upon each other. Our climactic battle where we have our gunslinger here, Inquisitor Lady duking it out, airships and gliders with shades of Miyazaki, style designs, which is always fun. Obviously we don't want to spoil too much, dragons do show up, 
I don't want to give too much away. But this is a nice little touch. They have a little bit of background material in the last few pages detailing how they came up with the characters, inspiration and origins. Some of these people you probably don't even recognize because I didn't even show them in there. But that's okay. Let's see the copyright date. Oh yeah, English translation. Not surprising. 2009. So yeah, that's about right. I didn't realize I've had it this long. But this is one of those books I don't think it's like tearing up the aftermarket in terms of pricing. So if you want a fairly quick read, like I said, I've read it a couple times. Um, it's a nice way to spend the afternoon or multiple afternoons if you want to just take your time with it. And if you enjoy a good fantasy yarn, I... I don't really see how you can go wrong with this. Sure, it may cover very familiar territory, uh, but sometimes that's a good thing. It's one of those comfort things, you know. Uh, you don't need to have all the weird craziness at all times. But then again, that almost becomes the new normal if you're somebody like me who's actively searching for all that weird craziness. I was going to say, then you get books like this where you've got baby-faced octopi fighting giant robots, but... Amazing Forest is something we can discuss on another day, because that book was out there. But yeah, anyway, I will see if I can find a link below for you guys if you want to check this out. And if you guys have any knowledge about the Italian versions, I would love to hear it. I know even less about Italian comics than I do about French ones. Uh, but I really enjoyed this one and now i'm probably gonna have to pull it off the shelf again after i film this and start going through it especially like i said now that it's vacation time and i actually have time to read what a novel concept right i'm thinking i'm gonna be busting out quite a few old classics that i've never had a chance to film or talk about so maybe you might see some familiar books over the next few weeks so with that said this has been high lord tamberlane with obscurities and miniatures saying thanks for watching and we will see you back here soon bye bye